God bless you beyond your expectation in Jesus' name. As you have told us, run to Jesus. Come to Jesus, we can. He's deliverer, he'll deliver you. He's healer, he will heal you. Look at your amen. amen. <laughs> it's like a quarter cold that's taking your voice away. I said they will deliver you. Amen. Wonderful to be together today. This is the church, leadership of the church. Not just this denomination, that denomination, we're all together. And I pray we'll stay together. Amen. Let me hear your amen. And all the ministers and Christian workers online, every congregation, every country, I welcome you. We are looking at the words of Jesus and the prayer. He taught us to pray. Something good will happen in your life. Yeah. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you're doing, what you'll still do. I'm asking, oh Lord, you bless everyone. Everyone, everyone, richly, abundantly, completely, even this day, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we go on in our series, you remember that the Lord Jesus himself taught his disciples his followers, the ministers, and the members, how to pray, what to pray for. And he said, after this manner, like this model, like this example, pray ye a father which art in heaven, he must be a father by conversion. By the new birth, we are born into the kingdom. And so we can say, our father, my father, yes, but I'm not the only one in the kingdom, a father who art in heaven. Hallowed, honor, glorified, be your name. And then he tells us now, he says, thy kingdom come. Thy will, not my will, Christ came to this world and he said, I came from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who has sent me. There are people, their will stands in the way. Their will blocks their vision. Their will slows them down. Their will isolates them. And they say, if it doesn't go my way, it will not go in any other way. Their will stops them from moving on. But when we surrender, when we submit, and we say, Lord, it's not my will. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. When we do his will on earth, as it is done in heaven, our lives will become heavenly. Let me say it properly. Your own life will become heavenly. And anything that is not of heaven, the Lord will wipe it away from your life. Heavenly glory. Heavenly supply. Heavenly blessing. The Lord will pour upon your life in Jesus' name. And then verse 11 says, Give us this day our daily bread. Now, that word bread, you need to understand, it's not just the loaf of bread you buy and get and put in your mouth. I'll tell you when we get there. But give us this day. Lord, give me this day. How can you live without food in your body? How can your soul, your spirit live without the heavenly manna, the bread that angels take, that will satisfy, that will supply every need, everything you need in your life? Give us this day 
every day we depend on the Lord. Every day we lean upon the Lord and he gives us the appropriate bread for the particular day. Yesterday will be different from today. The challenges of yesterday will be different from the challenges of today. And the bread that strengthened you, that qualified you, that made you to be on top yesterday, the bread of yesterday will not be sufficient for the challenges of today. Give us this day our daily bread. And when God does that, he'll make you strong. Un unconquerable. Unbeatable. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord will do for us today. My topic today is exceptional privileges for you. For who? For you. I said for who? At the next level. Now, if you don't get away from this level to the next level, you don't need any privilege. You've got it already. You are there already. You've counted one, two, three, four, five. I've got everything. No next level. Then there's no exceptional privilege. But as you're moving on and you're climbing up and you're going to the next level, exceptional privileges for the next level for you. Three points we're looking at. Number one, supplication for the king's reign. We want him to reign. And we want him to reign over everyone, everything on earth, starting from me. The supplication for the king's reign, thy kingdom come. Number two, submission to the king's rule, thy will be done. That demands submission. I come to the new day, and I come every day, and I say, Lord, today, did I spoil yesterday by my will, by my hard heart? Did I spoil my chances yesterday by being rigid, my will? Now today help me, Lord, and rule. Submission to the king's rule. Thy will be done. Number three, supply from the king's resources. Give us our deliberate supply from the king's resources. Let's come to number one. Number one, supplication for the king's reign. The kingdom come. Jesus said, this is the way we ought to pray. Thy kingdom come. In my heart, thy kingdom come. In my ministry, thy kingdom come. In my community, for God to reign, thy kingdom come. In our nation, for the Lord to have his way. In our nation, thy kingdom come. In the world, thy kingdom come. Now, there are three things we're looking at here. Thy kingdom come. We're looking at number one, prophecy concerning the coming kingdom. They say prophecy already. And all we're telling the Lord is it has been prophesied. It had been a promise. And it had been proclaimed. Fulfill that word now. That coming kingdom. The prophecy concerning the coming kingdom. Number two, preaching of the conquering kingdom. The preaching that when we go out, we go out with the power of the kingdom and the power of his kingdom will conquer every other power in any kingdom. Number three, the partakers of the consummate kingdom. The partakers, the people who say that kingdom come, they themselves have come into the kingdom of the Lord and they are partakers of that consummate kingdom. Look at number one. Number one is the prophecy concerning the coming kingdom. We're looking at um, Psalm 22, verse 27. It says, All the ends of the world 
shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. That's the prophecy. And that's the reason we're having crusades. That's the reason we're establishing churches. That's the reason we're planting churches. That's the reason we take the name of Jesus Christ everywhere. Because the prophecy is there that all the ends of the world shall remember. They'll remember Calvary. They'll remember his sacrifice. They'll remember his provision. And it says they will turn unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before him. Look at verse 28 there. In verse 28, for the kingdom is the Lord's. It doesn't belong to Satan. Satan is a usurper and it is the preaching, it is the prayer, it is the faith, it is the focus, it is the vision we have that takes the kingdom away from the hand of the usurper. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is governor, he is governor, he governs, he rules, he is governor among the nations. And I pray as we spread the gospel, as we preach the word, as a professional, as a preacher, anyone, any area we are, the nations of the world will be governed by our Lord in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 6, it says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it says, for unto us a child is born. That's the child that will rule the world and unto us a son is given. That's the son, the savior that died on the cross and the government shall be upon his shoulder. It is the prophecy and no word of God will fall to the ground. He has said it, it will be fulfilled. And then it says, and his name shall be called Wonderful, and his government will be wonderful. Counselor and mighty God, the everlasting Father, that's the Father of eternity, the Prince of Peace. Then in verse 7, it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom, his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. God is watching that prophecy and he's, make, he's going to make that kingdom to come. How about the kingdoms that are there now all over the world? Look at this in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 it says, And in the days of these kings, the Roman Empire, the Grecian Empire, the, the Persian Empire, and the Babylonian Empire, in the days of all these four kings, worldwide kingdoms shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be led to other people and it shall break in pieces and consume all these other earthly kingdoms and it shall stand forever that's the prophecy concerning the kingdom and when jesus said we should pray thy kingdom come is telling us Go back to the prophecy, dig out that prophecy concerning the coming kingdom and tell the Lord, do as you have said, thy kingdom come. Look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, and I saw in the night visions, and behold one like the son of man. That's my savior. That's my redeemer. That's my deliverer. Behold, one like the Son of Man came of the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. And they brought him, the Son, near before him, the ancient of days. And then in verse 14, it says, And it was giving him dominion and glory and a kingdom. The ancient of days already handed over 
that coming kingdom unto the Son of Man, unto Jesus Christ. And it says that all people, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the kingdom come, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Somebody shout here, amen. amen. Number two here, number two, the preaching of the conquering kingdom. The preaching of the conquering kingdom. Now, there are people that preach. There are many preachers, many ministers, orators, but they never preach the kingdom. They don't understand. They don't understand. They, some people preach church. Some people preach instead of Christianity. They preach churchianity. My church. My church. Hold on. Thy kingdom come. Go preach that. The kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of God. The kingdom where Christ reigns. And Christ rules. Not the kingdom where the general superintendent, general overseer, founder rules and he says, uh-uh, I know the Bible, but don't bring Bible here. I am the founder. I am the bishop. I am the overseer. I say, sir, thy kingdom come, not your kingdom. I didn't hear him into that one. But you know, when we surrender and we give up our own kingdom, our own authority, our own dominion, our own rulership, our own despotic hold on the people, and we say, Lord, who am I? What do I have? What I want? Thy kingdom come. And we preach that, the preaching of the conquering kingdom. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as she go preach this Christ, giving the first set of preachers instruction as to what to preach. It says, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at that. It's saying what we preach. We preach the peace of the kingdom. We preach the spirit of the kingdom. We preach the power of the kingdom. Of the kingdom we preach the prevailing authority of the kingdom we preach the universality of the kingdom go saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand look at verse 8 in verse 8 heal the sea that's part of the kingdom activity cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received now the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the coming kingdom, the conquering kingdom, is not about money. It's not about Simon coming and saying, give me this power also, that on whosoever I lay my hands, he will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, you don't understand the kingdom, your money perish with you. It's not about give me the power of the kingdom. I'll give you money. It's not that we do something, you know, or we go and dig, uh, you know, something somewhere, and uh, we bury something somewhere, and we're saying then our ministry, uh -huh, your ministry, your kingdom, will expand. This one freely you have received and freely give. Look at uh, Luke chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 42. Luke chapter 4, verse 42, and when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. And then in verse 43, verse 43 says, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God. Christ said, 
already he taught us how to pray. You see, your preaching must not contradict your prayer. And your prayer must support and sustain your preaching. He had said, when you pray, here is how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, had would be thy name, thy kingdom come. And now he said, after praying thy kingdom come, your preaching must support the prayer. I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 14. In Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom. This good news of the kingdom. That Christ is Savior. The only Savior. That Christ is healer. The perfect healer. That Christ is deliverer. The redemptive deliverer. That gospel. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Shall be preached in all the world as we pray the Lord's Prayer in all the world, thy kingdom come, the same way the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, those early ministers, workers, soul winners, evangelists, preachers, professionals who are Christians, what did they do? In the Acts of the Apostles, from the first chapter to the very last chapter. Let me take you to Acts, last chapter, <clears throat> last verse. Acts 28, verse 31. Preaching the kingdom of God. Preaching the kingdom of God. Paul the Apostle did not say, I've graduated from that now. I preach that since I came to know him in chapter 9. And then chapter 15, we went all around preaching that. And in chapter 16, chapter 17, we preach that kingdom everywhere. They say, I want another subject. There's no other subject. Here is the ultimate subject. Here is the highest subject, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, that the king of the kingdom, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Number three here, the partakers of the consummate kingdom. The partakers of the consummate kingdom. Sometimes... You have somebody saying, buy this medicine, get this all around, all effective medicine. It will kill your belly, it will kill your head, it will kill your hand, it will kill your bone, it will kill everything. It's an uh, all-purpose medicine. And somebody says, before he buys the medicine, uh, have you taken part of the medicine before? What did it do for you? Oh, well, he said, I'm a salesman. I'm only selling. I don't, uh, I don't take it actually. And then you are recommending for other people. There, there are some people, they may preach the kingdom, but their heart has not submitted to the king. Their heart has not been saved, has not been cleansed, has not been purified, has not been sanctified, and their heart is not submissive unto the king. They never think of the king of the kingdom in their personal life, in their decisions, in the places they go, in the things they do, in the things they say. They are not under the authority of the king of the kingdom. And yet, they are trying to preach the kingdom. It doesn't work that way. If you're going to proclaim the kingdom, if you're going to project the kingdom, if you're going to recommend the kingdom, you yourself, you have to be a partaker of 
the H kingdom, the consummate H kingdom. Look at John chapter 3, verse 3 there. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very late, very late, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, except a minister be born again, except Nicodemus be born again except the ruler of the jews the leader of the jews the preacher among the jews except in nicodemus be born again except peter except paul except you be born again you cannot see the kingdom of god we must be partakers of the salvation from the king we must be partakers of the forgiveness from the king. We must be partakers of the transformation that comes from the king. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, Except a man be born of water. Does that mean uh, water baptism? No. You know, sometimes uh, we tell our children, you are a Christian. Why? How? Because you are baptized as an infant. To start with, please. Remember, we're talking about the king and the kingdom. Search through the activities of the king. In the kingdom, you'll not find a baby each days old or a sign of the cross on the forehead and say now that baptism, what you call baptism, makes you a Christian. We know it does not. Why? Because that child already baptized, telling lies and stealing and fighting and doing stuff that a Christian will not do. It, it, the baptism does not make us Christians. What baptism, uh, what water is he talking about? Uh, the water of the word. That when the word comes to you, and it washes you, and cleanses you, and you become a new creature in Christ, and the Spirit of God bears witness with your heart, that you are a child of God, except that happens, you have not entered into the kingdom. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, For ye know that no monger, do baptize in water, no unclean person, no baptize it at eight days, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Then in verse 6, it tells us, let no man deceive you. Let no preacher deceive you. Let no bishop deceive you. Let no minister, any preacher deceive you. Let no man deceive you with vain words because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. When we are born again, when we're born anew and born afresh, when the power, the transforming power of Calvary comes within us and we're transformed, then we're no more children of disobedience. We enter into the kingdom. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. There are some people that have entered. After they enter, then they go out and they're roaming about like wanderers, and they're no more inside the kingdom. I will stay and abide in the kingdom. <laughs> Say it aloud. You know what the Bible says? The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, goes out, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I pray the grace of God 
will not diminish it will multiply in every life in jesus name look at hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 28 hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 wherefore we receiving a, a kingdom that is a present kingdom there is a coming kingdom and we who are partakers of the kingdom of god now we stay, we abide, and we want to inherit the, king, the coming kingdom. Therefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. I'm coming to point number two here now. Point number two, submission to the king's rule. Thy will be done. We're coming to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the kingdom, there's only one throne. And the king, the appointed one, the anointed one, the approved one sits on that throne. Satan and Christ do not, cannot, will not sit on the same throne. Just him, the king, alone, without a rival, without opposition, and without a competitor. You know, in our lives, Sometimes we don't understand that if we have submitted to the king of the kingdom, we cannot have a rival with the king on the throne of our heart. We cannot share the throne of our heart between Christ and Satan, between Christ and a powerful man on earth, between Christ and and personal opinion if he is king let him be king <clears throat> god bless you yeah. and god bless me too yeah. he doesn't accept a rival thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven i want you to picture in your mind somebody is um, a native a citizen of this country your country and that citizen traveled to another country that other country has a different constitution a, con a different law and he's been living by that law and constitution in that other country. Now he comes back to our country, your country here, and he brings the constitution of another country. He brings the constitution of his own country here and is looking at them. And when the one, the constitution of our country is okay for him, he follows that. When the constitution of the other country, different from ours, is okay for him, he follows that. No way. You can't do that. You cannot be responsible to two different kings and two different kingdoms at the same time. If you are for Christ, you are for Christ. If you are for the other power, the powers that be, then that is where you are. But when we come, and we come to the kingdom, we submit to the king's rule, and we say, thy will, not our will, their will, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Look at Psalm 103, and I'm reading from verse 19. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all without any rival without any competition and without any struggle it says his kingdom ruleth over all 
Look at verse um, 20. It says in verse 20, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength in heaven, that do his commandments, hearkening unto his word. Hearkening unto his word. They are not here and there, up and down, but they hearken to his word. And then in verse 21, it says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do. You don't do your pleasure, you don't do your will, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Now, What's your lifestyle? What's your attitude? Are you a strong, strong personality? Whatever I decide, whatever I desire, whatever I declare, and I say that is what I'm going to do. Paul may come back alive again and preach. If it's different from what I said, I've decided, I've declared, I've determined that is what I will do. Even Paul, if he rose up again to come to preach, will not convince me. I close my mind, I close my eyes to the wide range of truth and light of the kingdom. Now, you're not a real minister, man member of the kingdom because it says ye ministers of his do his pleasure i pray the transforming grace of god will come to every life today we will do his will Amen. i will do his will we will do his pleasure it means you take self away from the throne of your heart you say self you have been usurping authority now the king christ the lord himself will sit on the throne of your heart as he directs as he controls as he instructs and as he counsels and he says this is the way to go that's the way you will go that's the way I will go. And the Lord confirm it by grace in your life in Jesus' name. Three things here. Number one, doing God's will like angels in heaven. Number two, declaring God's word like ambassadors of holiness. Number three, devotion to God's work without acts of hypocrisy. Let's look at number one. Number one is doing God's will like angels in heaven. That's what we read already. Bless the Lord, ye is angels that excel in strength and that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels, they stand before God, and they hear, and they listen, and they are attentive to the instruction of the king of heaven. They don't just uh, say, okay, God, you want me to go, I'm going, wait. Get the message, get the instruction, hacking and listen to what the king has to say before you become an herald of the king, hacking unto his word. That word hacking is in the continuous tense. They listen to the past, they're listening now, and they will listen as long as they are in the presence of the Lord. Um, you, you understand some, I'm not striking anyone. I'm just saying this is what I observe. 
that if they are not preaching that particular day of service another person is preaching minister they will go out of the meeting they'll be discussing with somebody outside there and if anybody asks them and they say ah, papa why are you not uh, there in church some preaching is going on why are you not hearing it <laughs> he says the young man the person preaching there had been preaching before he was born into this world and so whatever he's going to say and whatever he's going to preach, I already know everything. We give all these things to young people and allow the young people to carry on. Uh -uh. You see the angels, they are always happening, always listening. And you will not say, I've done my duty, I've done my part, my part came earlier. I was to read the scripture for the day. And now I've read that and now I can leave the service and go and do business. No, I've done my part. I've done the singing and now I can go and do other things. If we're going to do the will of God here on earth, as it is done in heaven, we're always hearkening, always listening, always paying attention to the voice of his word. And then what we hear, we're not hearers only, we're doers of the word. We hear and we do. And we do like the angels, we do that will completely. We don't choose and sit. We don't say, I like that one. No, I don't like that one. I accept that one. I don't accept that one. Angels don't do that. They do the will of God explicitly, expressly. And you can tell they're flying, they're running, they're going where they're going because they are for the accomplishment of the word, the will, and the way of God. And they do that as much as possible with all their strength. They don't say, I don't, I don't want to spend all my energy here preaching because I still have other things to do. My friend, what's the other thing that's more important than running errands for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Everything you have, all the strength you have, all the power you have, all the skill you have, all the intelligence you have, all the ability you have, you push into the work of God doing the will of God on earth as angels do in heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. The power to do that, the Lord will give to you. The purpose of mine to do that and sink all your energy, everything you've got into the work of God, the Lord accomplish it in your life in Jesus' name. All right, if uh, there's no amen there, the Lord accomplish it in my life in Jesus' name. The Lord loves you and I love you too. It's wonderful to hear your voice and to say, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And the Lord will bless you. Look at number two. Number two here is declaring God's word like ambassadors of Holiness, declaring God's word. You know, when the angels come, they come from heaven. If he sends them to Sodom and Gomorrah, they just declare the word of the Lord. If he sends them to Zechariah, they just declare the word of the Lord. If he sends them to Mary the Virgin, they just declare the word of God. They don't say, this is King Herod. I cannot deliver it like I ought to deliver it. They come like ambassadors of holiness and they declare the word of the Lord. And I pray that same power, that same courage, that same fortitude, the Lord will grant to you in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, verse 53. Acts 7, verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. By the disposition of angels. They received the law 
whether they will keep it or not, the angel will not worry. That's, you know, between them and God. And the people were speaking to, and the people were preaching to, were not watching them. Are they happy with what I'm saying? Are they accepting what I'm saying? Are they going to do what I'm saying? No, no, that's between them and God. But you, you come like the ancients, like the ambassadors of holiness, and you say, hear in the word of God. And when they hear, I pray the power in you, the courage in you that makes you to declare the word courageously. That same power, that same strength, that same grace will come to them. They too, they will do. Amen. You are doing not in your own strength. It's in the strength of the Lord. If you could obey the Lord in the strength of the Lord, by the grace of God, that same grace God has given you, it will give to all your hearers. They will not throw the word of God away. You tell them, you show them, you declare to them like ambassadors of holiness, and that same holiness they will accept in Jesus' name. Hold on now. You know, sometimes there are people when they are in a particular congregation, let me make it a little bit personal. Here they are, they are in deeper life. And the end will give them message to preach confidently, assuredly, powerfully. They declare the word of holiness. Teach, give them Sunday scripture, Sunday school, and give them a kind of message at the retreat. Give them a kind of message in the conference what deep and life is the organizer they preach that holiness like nobody else and now maybe something happens and they feel led to go and start a ministry all right no problem and now you have a ministry a church an assembly a fellowship and now you are the all in all. You are the overseer. You are the founder. And you are the one that calls the short. And now you look at the congregation and you begin to preach. I hear you, some of them. And you cannot declare the word like you declared when you were in deep life as ambassadors of holiness. If you are hearing me, come back. I don't mean come back to deeper life. That's just an organization. I said come back to your ambassadorial work and preach holiness like you used to do in the good old days. I lost my aim. Yeah. And if you are not in any way connected with that church they call deeper life, no problem. God accepts all of us. You are born again. You are a real child of God. And now you have come to this conference and you have seen that what the Lord expects for us to do is that thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Get to it. And like ambassadors of holiness, anywhere you go, you'll preach salvation. You'll preach transformation of life. You'll preach the grace of God that comes into our lives and makes us the men, the women we ought to be. And then preach holiness, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. So that on that side, in the west, on that side, in the east, on that side, in the north, on that side, in the south, the word of holiness and the word of God everywhere, in every country, in every nation will be going on. And when the Lord shall come, the people who have been transformed by grace, they will get up and be caught up in the rapture. I will be there. You will be there, they will be there, all will be there, will be in heaven together in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a good amen, but I want to have a better amen. amen. Look at number three here. Number three here, devotion to God's work 
without acts of hypocrisy. Devotion to God's work. The work he has called us to do. You are not like jack of all trades, but master of none. You keep on doing the work of God. I learned of a particular uh, farmer. This, this is a true story. This is not just a make-up story, made-up story. This farmer heard that people were having gold mineral in, on their farm and that they would dig and dig and dig. And eventually, this farmer called some diggers and they started digging for him after they have dug and dug and dug for a number of weeks. They didn't strike gold. And so that farmer was discouraged. And he said, this is like scrap. And uh, some people said they are willing to buy the farm. He said, what do I need the farm for? And he sold the farm to another person. And uh, those people, they started where he stopped and they started digging. Before one yard of digging, they had the gold plenty. And they became millionaires. And the man that sold the farm because he did not dig enough, dig further, dig deeper, he missed his chance. You will not miss your chance. When we're devoted to God's work, we don't say, I've done enough, do more. I've gone far, go farther. I've, didn't Jesus say, always think of the extra mile. The extra mile. You've gone to this level, extra mile. You've done, gone to that height, extra mile. You've done this, extra mile. The strength for God to keep you on your job, always moving on, always digging. That strength will not fail in your life. Yeah. Look at this. Devotion to God's work without acts of hypocrisy. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Oh, Samuel said, is that true? You know, there are people that will push you forward. I've done it. You don't have to investigate. I've done it. You don't have to examine it. I've done it. You don't have to listen to any other voice. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Look at uh, verse uh, 20 there. In verse 20, and Saul so said unto Samuel, Yea, yes. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me and I have brought back Agag, the king of Amalek and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Verse 21, in verse 21, but the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. The people, they took it. So, did you see them? Yes. Did you challenge them? No. Who is the king? Who has the responsibility? Who has the duty? The king. Why did he to challenge them? He feared the people. This, he said, I excuse them because they were to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Verse 22, it says, and Samuel saith, said, as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Number one thing on the list that God is checking 
in our lives, in our ministry, in our devotion, in our consecration, is obedience to his word, his will, his way, and his work. I pray that that kind of devotedness the Lord will grant unto you. Yeah. Unto me. Unto I said unto me. He will do it. Hey, look at this. Let me give you this. Judges chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 4. Judges chapter 8. Reading from verse 4. And see the attitude of somebody that was devoted to the work of the Lord. Like God will give you the power, the grace to be so devoted in Jesus' name. Amen. Judges chapter 8 verse 4. And Gideon came to Jordan and passing over he and the 300 men that were with him. Faint, tired, almost dropping because of the heat of the day. Faint, yet pursuing them. He wouldn't give up until he had finished and finalized everything the Lord called him to, you will not give up. Yeah. I will not give up. Say it like I said it now. Heaven has heard you. Yeah. And the grace to keep on preaching, to keep on praying, to keep on pursuing, the Lord will give you abundant grace in Jesus name. Yeah. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, supply from the king's resources. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading from verse 11. Supply from the king's resources, give us our daily bread. It says, give us this day our daily bread. What's bread for? Bread is for strength. Bread is for the energy. Bread is for the power. Now, when he said bread there, he's not talking only about loaf of bread. He's talking about food in general. He's talking about the ones that have carbohydrates and protein and the vegetables and the fruits that will supply all the nutrients in your body. Bread. The one that will give you enough blood. You will not be anemic. And that blood will get to your brain, will be pumped out of your heart, and will get to all the parts of your body. And it includes water as well. Everything that will nourish us, that's what it means. And now there's the physical bread, and there is the spiritual bread. Spiritual bread, I never heard of that. You're here now. The Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus Christ and said, My daughter is grievously vexed and tormented with the devil. And she wanted Christ to heal that child, deliver that child. And Jesus said, It is not right. It is not me to give the children's bread. That one is not rice. To give the children's bread, that one is not kokoyam. To give the children's bread, that one is not a soup or fish or meat. To give the children's bread unto dogs. And uh, the woman said, truth, Lord. But the dogs eat of the crumbs of bread that fall from the master's table. And he said, woman, Great is your faith. Be it unto you as thou wilt. And the daughter was healed and delivered that same hour because of the children's bread. The children's bread is also healing. The children's bread is also deliverance. Spiritual, the Lord will satisfy you. Yeah. 
physical the lord will satisfy you professional the lord will satisfy you and your family your wife your husband what you are looking for children's bread the lord will grant unto you three things number one the source and sufficiency for our daily needs number two the supplication and supply of our desired necessities number three the scheme of sowing in the divine nest look at number one there number one the source and sufficiency for our daily needs we're looking at um, at uh, deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth get wealth get wealth is coming your way Amen. that he may establish his covenant which is swear unto thy fathers as such this as it is this day the power to get wealth what does that mean for them israelites many of them were farmers the power the strength to rise up in the morning the power the strength to take the siege and go to the farm the power, the foresight to know the season when a particular crop would be planted and the power to plant, the foresight and the vision to fence their garden and their field so that the pests will not destroy their crops and the power and the vision to know when harvesting time has come and the power to get all the crops and bring them to the barn and the power to take it from the barn take it to the market and market it and get wealth it's a process it's a process and the lord gave them the strength and the power to get wealth, it will give you. Yeah. Look at Psalm 68, verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily, daily, daily loadeth us with benefits. The benefits of today will come upon your life. Yeah. Even the God of our salvation. But there's something interesting here. Look at Psalm 104, reading from verse 23. Psalm 104, reading from verse 23. Here is how God gives us, provides us daily, daily bread. Psalm 104, verse 23. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. You know, the people who talk away their lives. The people who just, it's like no business, no work, no planting, no reaping, no sowing, no activity, no skill. They're just there. It doesn't work that way. The way he gives us a daily bread is that man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening look at verse 24 in verse 24 O oh lord how manifold are thy works in wisdom as thou make them all the earth is full of thy riches and part of the riches will get to that place of work in your life yeah. i'm looking at number two here number two the supplication and supply for our desired necessities look at uh, chapter chapter 58 of isaiah verse 3 chapter 58 isaiah and then we're looking at verse 3 wherefore have we fasted say thee and thou seest not wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge behold in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exert all 
your labors. I'm sometimes surprised. People who have a spiritual desire and the desire is so deep that they will go into fasting. And that is great. But when they are fasting, they are hungry. And when they are hungry, they get easily infuriated, angry, furious. And if the man is fasting, sometimes a man says, I'm going to fast for three days, no problem. Sometimes seven days, no problem. But don't go too far without taking water. We can live without food for many, many days. We cannot live without water for a number of days. If, it's, if the fasting is going to be prolonged, make sure you are taking enough water. Now, when they fast like that, any little thing the wife does at home, they're easily angry. Don't spoil my fast. Don't spoil my preparation. That's how you are. And then he begins to call the wife different names, unprintable names. The man is angry because he is hungry. Do you see those two words? Hungry, angry, angry, hungry. And the more hungry they are, the more angry they are. Am I talking to my people? Are you hearing? And so, as they fast and fast and fast, and they say, I want power. I want this. I want this. And the answer does not come. Oh, they say, God is not like he used to be in the good olden days. When Moses fasted, when Elijah fasted, when Christ fasted, look at what happened, and I have fasted and nothing happened. All those people that fasted, you are referring to, they didn't beat their wives during the time of fasting. They didn't get angry and flog their children almost to death when they were fasting. All those people you were talking about, they didn't do any shady thing, and their emotion, and their attention, Emperor did not get the better part of them when you were fasting. When you are fasting, look at this. They said, Why have we fasted? They say, And thou seest not. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it tells us, Behold, ye fast for strife. Anytime you are fasting, there's no peace in the family. Anytime you are fasting, who drops something there? Who made the noise there? When I finish my fast, I'll deal with you. You will know there is a soldier captain in this family. Uh -uh. The fasting will amount to nothing because he fast for strife and debate to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict a soul? Is it to bow down the hedge as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast? An acceptable day to the Lord. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness? When you are fasting, you remember somebody that offended you, you've been holding in your heart. That fasting time, lose all the cause and to let the oppressed go free. You have servants, you have people who are working with you, you have workers who are working with you to be nice to them. There's nothing wrong in saying good morning uh, to your brothers and sisters who are working with you and there's nothing wrong in wearing a smile. There's nothing wrong in you know congratulating them or praising them when they 
if done well, so that they will do better. It says to endure the heavy bodies and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. When you want yokes to be broken in your family, also you break whatever yoke you put on people, break that yoke and let them go free and you will go free too. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, is not this, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. You're doing good. You're praying, you're fasting, you're doing good as well. And then it says, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Thou hide not thy pocket from your better half, your wife or your husband, that you hide not the extra amount you got in your office above the salary, that you hide not away from your flesh, that you don't hide your thoughts, you don't hide your plans, you don't hide what you're going to do from thine own flesh. You know, when we live a life like that, that is open, a life that gives joy to our partner and your spouse, your wife, your husband is not just living like an abandoned tenant in the same house. Your fasting, God will honor. Your prayer, God will answer. And every good thing you desire, the Lord will do in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy rare world. Glory upon your life. Power upon your life. Sufficiency upon your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, the schema of sowing in the nest, in the divine nest. The scheme, God has a scheme. And the scheme is that what you have, you sow, then it will grow, and then you reap the harvest. Are you there? Look at this woman. She had the last meal. Everything now is at the bottom of the container and it's the last meal she will cook and eat and then herself and the son will say bye-bye to the world no means of sustenance anymore and then God told Elijah Elijah go to that widow woman I have commanded her out of her poverty and penury I have commanded her that she, he, she will sustain you in the time of this famine. This time of recession, the Lord will sustain you. Amen. This time of the economic downturn, the Lord will sustain you. Amen. How will he do that? I will sit here. God has said he will provide. And then people will be coming and they give to me. Uncle who has forgotten me all these years will remember me and uh, nephew will remember me. My brother is having a good job. He's forgotten me. He will remember me. I just sit down here and I open my mouth and I believe that from here, there and there everything will come. Amen. I said amen. You know that amen will result in all me. Oh me means that I'm waiting, they're not coming. I'm waiting, they're not coming. But you see that widow woman, how God provided, God will provide for you. Yeah. And Elijah rose up and he came and as he entered the city, he saw one woman gathering sticks. And she said, Hey, woman, can I have a glass of water to drink? That woman could have said, what had to drink, your prophet, instead of praying for me first, what had to drink. 
<laughs> your prophet, instead of talking to heaven and then there will be rain and be plenty, and you are saying, give me water to drink. She didn't say that. She went, she dropped everything she was doing and uh, brought, she was going to bring water. And while she was going for the water, uh, Elijah said, hey, while you are coming, bring me some food as well. Ah, the woman said that's an impossibility. I don't have anything. I'm just gathering sticks. I'm cooking the last meal. I will eat and die. And Elijah took death out of her mouth, out of her family, out of herself. Your time to die is not yet. There's a new ministry the Lord is raising up. A new army the Lord is raising up. And a new endeavor that you will do. Death? Uh-uh. Not now. Not now. And Elijah said, Elijah did not say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that's your condition. God must have made a mistake in sending me to you to feed me. Elijah said, go and do as you have said and bring me the meal first. Because this burial of meal shall not waste. You will not lag until Plenty comes again in our land. Yeah. You know, our land, our country, things will change. Yeah. Recession will vanish away. Yeah. This time of austerity, everything will change. Yeah. You will still be alive. Yeah. You will see. Yeah. And so the woman... Now, the woman was hearing the message, the preaching from Elijah the first time. That woman was not a regular member of Elijah's congregation. And yet, hearing for the first time, and she never heard a message like that before. And she went and did as a man of God at sage. And every day, instead of everything finishing, increasing. Instead of the barrel of meat, just saying, uh, but she knew there was nothing there before, and there is nothing in uh, Now there is plenty. Yeah. On your life, there is plenty. Yeah. In your family, there is plenty. Yeah. In your profession, uh, there is plenty. Yeah. Go on you as he has said plenty has come Amen. look at matthew chapter 6 verse 33 matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all 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 your dreams all your desires all your needs, all your aspirations, all your ambitions, all the things you have been envisioning, and you say, when shall it come? It's starting today. And all these things shall be added unto you. What is the you I'm talking about? You, where are you? I can't see your head behind the person in front. Can't you stand up and let me? That's you. That's the, that. There you are. There you are. There you are. All these things shall be added unto you. Raise your voice to the Lord and pray. I believe. I believe. I believe. Give us this day our daily bread, and the Lord will satisfy you.